the illegal dangers of TikTok shop. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, it's doing well. All right, I need to steal this. Yep, I will now steal this and uh, upload it to my YouTube channel. By the way, any YouTube frogs watching after the fact, if you guys don't already subscribe to Tov, you're really just messing up. Go drop him a sub. It, this video will be the first one linked in the description. I highly recommend that if you stick around and you enjoy your stay, well, obviously, drop a like and a sub. But if you do stick around, feel free to throw this OG video up on another tab. Hit the mute mute tab button let it play all the way through so that the original creator gets the watch time also youtube for or twitch chat if you guys are wondering why i'm doing this cringe youtube intro there you go I upload the videos to that channel all right let's get into this thing dude how is it that after what feels like every two seconds on tiktok they're trying to sell you something bro it was so bad the other night i didn't get it until literally i was just scrolling on tiktok four or five videos i think also a live stream was just like promos for the tiktok shop and then ads i was like bro what 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 which is a big reason why i'm not even on tiktok anymore i don't really be uploading to there i don't really be on like you know scrolling on there and stuff yeah it's a mess Literally anything they can sell, they will try. I do stream on there sometimes, though. Try to sell to you. From these turbo fan shower heads, the socket fan light, rice dispensers, egg dispensers, $29 go-karts, to the insanely popular hair curlers. I mean, what? it doesn't have to be those specific products, but you get the point. They find something That's that real, fits on your For You page and show it to you about 80,000 times. And guys, I can't lie, I too am a victim of TikTok shop. I bought what? a water ear cleaner that I haven't even opened up, but just because the woman that was using it looked like she was having an orgasm. And I also <laughs> want to know how it feels like to have an orgasm from some water in your ear. Again, another unopened product I bought, a slushy maker. I think that's- I'm going to be honest. I don't really trust the water ear things. I do have, I was on the wave before anyone else was. I have one of the like things with the camera in it that you put in your ear. And honestly, it helped me have a way, like, I know I still get, like, ear infection stuff, but it was bad, bro. Like, it was really bad there for a minute when I was using, like, Q-tips. I wouldn't even use them, like, a lot. I would get that, like, right outside of my ear. Uh, Anyways, yeah, not to go into gross, gruesome details, but, yeah, the ear, like, cleaner with the camera thing where you, like, safely, like, clean your ear, way better in my opinion than Q-tips. Squeeze cup that I'm definitely going to use for making slushies, not for anything else. Because nothing else fits in there. But you guys get the point. Wait, what? Alcohol? Is he talking about alcohol? Oh, he's talking about his wiener! Right? I'm a victim too, so I have a little personal beef with this. Ear infection? Yeah, I'm gonna... When we move and I get, like, PA doctors, I'm gonna, like, actually be like, yo, uh, let's get my... Let's get let's get this figured out. Why do I keep having so many ear issues? What's up with that? Topic. <laughs> Well, I decided to do a deep dive on TikTok shop, and it turns out there's a whole strategy <laughs> on how the TikTok shop actually works. Oh. That's actually very malicious and dangerous. From pure scams like these $29 go-karts, to goods possibly made from forced labor in China, what? and even substandard products like the hundreds of fake and potentially harmful cosmetic products being sold, or worse, prescription drugs advertised with no proper warnings as required what? by the FDA. So as you can see, this Reddit post supporting what I was saying about prescription drugs being sold on TikTok. I'm not going to lie to you. If they said that they had some, like, Propecia-type replacement on them, on that son of a gun, oh, uh, yeah, you better, you best believe I'm getting flipping tricked. I'm getting flipping tricked. I'm going, oh, yes, yes, TikTok daddy, here's my $40. You may have it now. You can solve my hairline problems. Yes, you may have my money. Talk shop was in fact deleted but i did find a video of another creator ranting about how she got an ad for zofran zofran being a prescribed drug and i'll play oh. a little clip of that i just got a tiktok shop ad for a medicine that i used to be on for nausea and they would literally put chemo patients on it and it was prescription only and you had to get refill and now they're selling it on TikTok shop. I'm I'm a little concerned here. This doesn't feel legal or right or just like that Reddit post, the creator is alleging that you could find this prescription drug here on TikTok shop. Though I tried looking it up and I didn't find it. I don't know if it's regional based or what, but just to be completely honest, I personally did not find Zofran on TikTok shop. So a clear wild west with a lot to talk about. And I'm yeah. definitely gonna go over the scams that each of those items are involved with. But first I wanna talk about how many ads you actually are seeing on your For You page and why that's a deliberate thing. A psychological game by TikTok and its creators that you- I use an elephant ear washer for my ears. It's what doctors use to clean out ears. What? For once in a while, Jesus fucking Christ and all the time. Yeah, don't worry, Greenish. I'll uh, I'll consult you whenever uh, if I ever get something for my uh, hairline that's leaving me very quickly. 
Yeah, I'll give him a perk 30 from Timu. No big deal. Yeah, dude, honestly. Yeah, dude, I don't know about no TikTok shop, but they be selling me um human slaves on Timu. Don't know what's up with that. Cannot win. With that being said, my name is Tuv. I make morbid documentaries here on this channel. And if you aren't subscribed, don't even worry about that. I promise I'll earn your subscription by the end of this video. Like I said in the intro, we're going to be talking about the dangers of TikTok shop. First, we'll talk about the psychological games, users versus creators versus the algorithm. Then we'll talk about counterfeits and more. Then scams for everyone. And lastly, unethical sourcing. So oh. let's head on to the first segment. Psychological games, users versus creators versus the algorithm. Uh -oh. Vox, the media house, did a piece on shady advertisers on TikTok sometime in 2022, and I think what they found is the perfect segue into the whole psychological games thing, specifically trust or more the abuse of it. While doing that piece, they went over a bunch of videos that found that some creators were not really disclosing pieces of content that were ads as it's required by the FTC, <gasps> and suffered no consequences for that at all. This is one example of the videos they unearthed. On the creator's timeline, it looks like your regular normal video with nothing more to it other than a brother and sister playing pranks on each other. However, it turned out to have been a full-on advertisement for a brand, the Joker Prank Shop. The hashtag at the end of the caption partly references that. The gun that the girl is using is what is being advertised. Don't you only have to put like hashtag ad in there, dude? What? First item, a sounding rod. Yo, what? At least thank you for the clip. It was one of the products by the shop and could be bought at your local Walmart, a fact clearly demonstrated in the video. Now, the whole thing was the work of Influencer Marketing Factory, a marketing agency that, according to Vox, had run other adverts with lots of other influencers in different niches that were never disclosed to be ads as well. And honestly, hats off to Sarah Morrison, the journalist behind the expose, because she Hell gave yeah. several very clear examples of the same thing happening with other creators all over the place. There's one where Charlie DeMillo, for instance, promoted a drink, Muse, by replying to a follower without Muse? disclosing that she My was bad. a brand partner to Muse. This one's pretty simple. They're really good and I really like them and they have a lot of different flavors and a lot of health benefits, so. She never used the branded content label as required by TikTok. She just tagged the brand. So to any more of the 140 million followers she had at the time, this could have been passed off as her genuinely enjoying news. I'm speculating though. Then there's also one where Patrick Minor, also known as A. Patrick, on several what? alleged occasions, simply prominently displayed drinks by Trying to strike a chord and the Bang brand, including booze, in videos that had no ad disclosure whatsoever. In one specific example, he does a personality test quiz in front of a bathroom mirror while the drink is in oh what this you gotta mark this as an ad i feel like this is just like genius branding bro like this is literally just genius branding and don't you do that in like like don't podcasts do that all the time like literally george's podcast patrick minor keep him away from drake anthony what's up bro how you doing how you been clear view the only thing that could hint at it being an ad was the hashtag hashtag vuz hydrate that oh. he places at the end of the caption oh so they paid him to make it an ad and then he was like okay here i got an idea okay well that makes sense i'm pretty sure we get the deal you need to describe it being an ad in order for it to be legal you can't how's my day storm trumper i'm a what can't just put hashtag hydrated and expect it to go over well. I mean, we did talk about Kim Kardashian being fined $1.26 million by the FCC for failing to properly disclose a crypto ad back in 2021. That was in this video I made. Every Please take a look. Who promoted a crypto scam, but. Oh, damn, dude. I got to tap in on in that. Wait. That was in this video I made. Who's on the front? Okay. Tana, Logan, Rice Gum. Don't know the dude on the right. And then Speed. Oh every single influencer who promoted a crypto scam but i'm sure you guys get the point and no no anthony you might be onto something what influencer promoting something and not disclosing it as an ad is just morally wrong and scummy and actually illegal so that video that i mentioned regarding the joker prank shop is actually a good reference to this because it's a case of a minor the girl advertising a product to kids without disclosure that it's an advertisement i mean how do you win against that in fact even disregarding targeting kids for a minute how would you an adult differentiate between someone who's just showcasing a product that they happen to use in their daily life from someone trying to get you to buy something so they get their commission or because they've already been paid to do so it's probably impossible without obvious disclosure and just to be clear the fcc requires a use of a hashtag for instance hashtag advertisement yeah. hashtag sponsored or hashtag ad right before the caption begins or in the content before the view more button on tiktok captions and for good measure creators are generally encouraged to use the branded label on tiktok to disclose brand partnerships 
in 2023, the FCC also said if a video is a partnership or sponsored, this also has to be made clear in the video itself, both in oh. written or verbal terms. Whether someone is watching the video on mute or not, it should be obvious. Who's really promoting these items on TikTok? Well, I'm gonna let you guys know, based on being on the internet for over a decade, I can confidently say it's people that want your money, okay? It's people that want commission. It's it's really rare, but yeah, I'm not gonna say it doesn't exist, but this is really rare where a person is genuine and they're like, hey, I got this thing and it works. Nowadays, it is extremely rare. If you're being shown something, it's probably gonna be an ad. And yes, people are scummy and they don't put that it's an ad in these new videos that you guys are watching, especially with TikTok shop giving commission to anyone that promotes that given product. But then psychological tactics don't end there. Where trust can't reach, TikTok's algorithm for sure gets to go. One of the best ways- Storm Trumper, Trumper? Yo, what? I want rain, where my flooding? I was promised, what? Nah, chat's turned into a cesspool, uh-uh. ways I've seen the algorithm described, and which is arguably true, is that it's, quote, addictive and anti-aesthetic, end quote. The addictive part is sort of obvious uh. because how else would anyone explain the 95 minutes a day that the average user spends on the app? Or even the approximate 19 times that such a user opens the app per day. What? The anti-aesthetic bit, though, is what I found. Dude, oh, oops, didn't mean to mute, I meant to pause it. Um... There must be something wrong with my brain, or maybe my For You page is just cooked, but, like, I'm not addicted to TikTok. Maybe my brain's wired weird, because I'd be, like, watching YouTube video essays that are, like, way too long and stuff. Like, all sorts of different things like that. I used to be addicted to TikTok. Like, I used to be on there all the time for hours and hours and hours on end. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what made my brain break free from it. But, yeah, now I'd be watching, like, long video essays and uh stuff like that sometimes i get some scroll on I, I definitely get my scroll on twitter but even still not like 95 minutes probably open it close to 19 times a day though but i don't usually look at it that much maybe it's because i'm a streamer and i'm used to like sitting here like doing pretty much nothing for a while other than like playing games or like adding commentary you know to the games or videos that i'm watching but yeah i don't know what it is man that such a user opens the app per day. The anti-aesthetic bit, though, is what I found curious and what really ties into the whole bit that I just described, and also, arguably, fuels the likelihood of a regular TikTok user being deceived by an ad. Think of it this way. The fact that TikTok is largely UGC and runs on informality, that's the kind of content we're likely to not associate with regular ads as seen on other platforms. The mm. informality seems to be what blurs the line between a regular post and an ad post. The ads we are seeing on TikTok aren't full-fledged professional cameras Camera. The ads nowadays is a middle-aged woman on her phone saying that, yo, this cup is pretty cool. It blends in with your entire For You page. You don't know if you're looking at an ad or not. I feel like I've gotten that point across pretty clear. But now let's talk about if you keep seeing those ads. As an LA Times reporter put it, while one random video advertising something might not get you to cave in, seeing that same video 10 or 20 times that what? look like real life testimonials about the same item might just become enough to get anyone spending. So in short, the psychological tactics used by TikTok really revolve around building trust through creators that act like your random neighbor or friend recommending something and an algorithm that learns you at a very detailed level and then begins hammering you with those same ads over and over until you cave. And even if you don't cave, well, you're still seeing the ads. There's a chance you will cave. And that's what TikTok shop wants. It wants yeah. you to cave. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, on my For You page, I feel like I open up TikTok to an ad, and I scroll once, I get like a regular, a regular TikTok. Then I scroll again, I get a live. Then I scroll again, I get a commission, a commission brand Goofy TikTok. all, what's I up, bro? Again, I get a regular TikTok. Then I feel like I get another creator commission thing. Like, ah. It's so annoying, but yeah. is that going to stop me from going on TikTok? Probably not. Yes, yeah. I am part of the problem, guys. I I am aware. But I'm going to try to do better. I'm going to try to do better. Also, YouTube, or not YouTube, sorry. TikTok hella incentivizes you to do shit like that on TikTok Live. Uh, Gabby, Gabby Bell did a good video about it, but they, they help. Goofy all, thank you for the 100 bits, but bro. I appreciate you. You're a fucking real one. Um... They hella incentivize you to do, um, to do, like, commissions and stuff like that. They're, like, they're like, do you want to, do you want to promote this product? You should promote this product. Oh, do you want to, do you want to promote a product on live? Oh, hey, you know how much money you can make by promoting a product on live? Hey, if you do this much in this amount of time, you can get this, this on live. They also hella incentivize streamers to try and get money, money from your viewership. You cannot, like, rank anywhere near in the top 100 if you are not getting 
money, like in any subgenre. Like they're like, yo, make your viewers give you fucking TikTok money, or you're useless to us. Which is like another reason why I don't stream on TikTok, dude. I don't stream on TikTok because it feels so disingenuous to me. Because they want, like, if you're gonna do well on their platform, you're gonna push people to give you money. It's not about interaction. It's not about connecting with viewers. It's not about even like garnering garnering an audience. It's like give me money now. They they paywall gifting subs as well. It's just a whole mess. That's that's why I don't I don't really stream on TikTok anymore because. I'm not that kind of streamer. If you don't want to give me your money, I, like, obviously, it helps me out a lot. It lets me be able to stream longer, but that's not why I do this stuff. I do this stuff because I like to, like, have genuine interactions with people while I play games or share videos with them. You know, it's, I'm not here to, I'm not here to milk you for your money and your cash, you know? I mean, every now and then I'll take a brand deal and I'll be like, hey, guys, if you play this game, you should check it out. It's fun. And also, it'll help me out a lot. Like, that's the farthest that I'll do. That's why, again, I, I'm not really, like, locked in on TikTok streaming anymore. I have great advice for everyone. Don't kill. You must out... Oh, out age your enemies? Yeah, don't uh-oh yourself. You must outlive your enemies. Hold on, let me catch up with chat really quickly. I used, I used to, and then I got nothing but edits of TV shows I've never heard of nor care for and deleted the app for a good three months and got it back and it just is boring so i mostly scroll through through get super bored and go back to other socials i'm addicted to other things though yeah same twitter for me right now which is weird i've never been like addicted to twitter but recently it's been like the feed has like gotten really good i feel like it's gotten well with like music stuff and then like 49ers stuff and like basically other shit that i'm interested in and then like homies and stuff um, I'm on my way home from the bar. Yo, let's go. How was that, bro? Um, viewer extortion. I found you on TikTok, Pookie. That's the only good thing. I mean, yeah, I've met so many cool people because of TikTok, and I'm grateful for that, and that's why I keep streaming on there is for the hope that I'll meet, like, one or two cool new people. Like, if I can meet one or two really cool people a week from TikTok streaming and watching, um, watching watching me on TikTok, then like, yeah, dude, we're, we're up. And that's why I'll continue to try on that shit. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. They also have very ass backwards rules. Oh yeah. I mean, their whole TO at, oh. Okay. My stream died for a second there. My bad. Um, back to what I was saying, they have like ass backwards rules and the whole TOS thing. I mean, I've been banned more than a hundred times for just saying like balls and stuff like that. Like, uh, D's nuts and stuff like that. Like that's literally, I've been I've been banned more than 100 times for absolute stupid reasons, and they will not tell you why they ban you. They will give you a very, very um, blanket statement, a very open-ended answer. You know, it's dumb as fuck. Chris would have had a 9 to 5 by now if he wanted money. Oh, bro, that is so true, dude. Like, I was thinking about it today. If I took what skills I have for videography and photography, and I was like, hey, I, I want a company to hire me. I want a company to hire me to do this. Nine to five, bro. I would, I would be, I would be making way more money, like literally way more money. I, dude, there's some months I don't even make anywhere near minimum wage on this shit, dude. You know, brother, when the blinker wears off before bed, Satch, I'll take another in a bit. Yes, sir. Also, cheers, goofy y'all. Not gonna lie, I use Twitter for sports and porn. Yeah, that's I'm not gonna lie to you. That's literally what Twitter was for for me before. But then once I cleaned up my feed, I was like, oh damn, this shit actually got me like addicted now. I also get good memes off there. Yeah, it's kind of fire. I think that's actually how my uh humor slightly improved a little bit too, as I've noticed that I've become a little bit more funny in the last like year. I think is uh, like a portion of that is contributed by Twitter because just people be saying the most random, dumb, goofy shit on there. And I'm just like, yeah, but we're going to take that and put that somewhere in the back of my mind. Anyways, sorry. We got so sidetracked. Sorry, YouTube frogs. I've been microdosing shrooms this week and work has been much more smoother. Really? Fuck yeah, dude. Uh. <laughs> people have been complaining about that for a while, actually. Now, while what I have covered is the core of it, I don't believe it's all there is to the psychological games. There are other tactics that, although not inherently bad, strongly nudge users to buy stuff that they didn't even know they needed. There's an article, for instance, that has equated mm. live selling on TikTok to QVC. And the thing with live selling, just like what happens with professional presenters on QVC, is that a creator can really create a one-to-one -one interaction that feels like just- Oh my god, Goofy, oh, that's fire, bro. Friend. But even better, 
The creator, unlike polished TV hosts, is unfiltered, up close, oh. and again, very informal in a way that doesn't feel like they're selling anything to you. Then there's also the psychology of price, where without going too much into it, TikTok covers some costs, like shipping costs, to keep the product cheaper and entice both shop owners and their customers. They even issue sales and Joe parts, which are honestly some of the oldest tricks in the book. Some sellers on TikTok have even been quoted saying they stopped listing on other platforms like Amazon, because not only are such platforms complicated and time consuming to set up, but also lack incentives found on TikTok shop that drive- Dude, I gotta tap in. I mean, to be honest with you, I know I've just been talking shit about TikTok, but you can literally list your merch on TikTok. I think I might start doing that and then start plugging it every now and then on a video that I make or whatever. I should probably lock it more on TikTok and I might in the future if it doesn't get completely banned because it can be very helpful. It's just I'm very burnt on it. Like I'm very frustrated on it all. I hope that it doesn't get banned and then I can like kind of be like, okay, it's not going to get banned. I'm going to detox from it for a while and like literally not touch it for a few months and be like, all right, I'm going to lock in. Right, the price is really low and sales quite high. This is actually a sort of controversial take, but we'll dive more into that once we go over the whole ethical bits of cheaply priced stuff. And you're probably wondering, well, if we aren't winning on TikTok shop, then who is? We obviously know that the seller is, but what about those, those creators that have the commission? Are they making good money? The answer is yes, sometimes. Okay, I've seen some people on my For You page being like, yo, new hoodie, you should get it. And the comments are like, bro, did not even try. But there are <laughs> some people that are really good at selling and they're really good at, I'm not gonna say lying, but they're really good at selling stuff to you. Convincing guy, you. For instance, Brandon Hurst, AKA Brandon the Plant Guy, said that in just a couple of months, he sold about 30,000 plants on TikTok what? shop via live selling. That's more plants than he had ever sold for the three years he had been running his business before joining the platform. There's also another TikTok shop owner, the CEO of Ocean Healed My Eczema, who said that in just three months, he was able to sell over $1 million worth of products on the platform. What? And one of the influencers working to push the eczema cream, Caitlin Bupre, after she made this video and a couple of others, said that in one particular month, she made $20,000 just from commissions. Never mind, dude. I love TikTok. I gotta tap in. Um, you, you guys finna open your TikTok feed. I'm finna be like, guys, you will never believe this new awesome product that I'm trying out today. So clearly, there's a lot of money to be made, and I see why there's a lot of young people hopping on the TikTok shop train. Counterfeits and more. If it's as good as Timu was, Timu was weirdly, weirdly, like, actually good. Like, the stuff that I got from it, like, I thought that it was going to be, like, literally, like, Wish slash dollar store stuff. It wasn't. Like, it wasn't. Weirdly, dude. And I know it probably just depends on who you're buying from and stuff like that, but yeah, man. It, it can be weirdly good. And now, obviously, we're watching a whole video about how it's all messed up. But, like, I, to be fair to TikTok, I don't think any of these companies are doing any of this morally well. You know? None of these companies, you can straight up, like, go through their track record and be like, oh, yeah, these guys have made it to the top with their morals. No, there's really not one company like that, at least that I know of right now. What's worse? That's why you buy from the little guy than psychological games though oh yeah the product not living up to the hype however Ooh. even worse are the fakes <gasps> i don't know if i'm pronouncing this right but i'm just gonna put it on the screen and say it coarse snail mucin is a great example of this this was a popular cream and still is that came from a korean skincare trend of using snail mucus to heal the skin Ew. Besides whether it works or not it just went viral and soon enough the original thing got so many copycats that finding the genuine product on tiktok yeah i'm like good brother in a minefield i mean you can find videos of creators trying to help differentiate between the real and fake thing but then right under such videos some users seem to blur the lines even further the creator is saying the real cream is sticky but then a follower alleges that theirs was sticky but ended up being fake right under that comment another user seems to Minna, wonder what's which up? one is the real one now regarding that specific brand coarse snail mucin there were reports that the fake product sold quite a lot and it was quick money to some shop owners one seller moved 37,000 bottles at five dollars each while another moved 40,000 bottles for about fifteen dollars each now the video I just talked about is just one among many others that try to warn users about the fakes. But then what's more concerning, despite the inability to rule out the fakes, is the uncertainty of what is in them. What really is in that fake cream bottle that you're putting on your face? Not. As one user put it, if it's not snail mucin, then what is it? A totally valid question when some of these stores were selling the bottles for up to $25. Like I said, there were a bunch of fakes, so you could find the price range. How are you? I'm pretty great overall. I can't complain. How are you?
It should be from $5 to even $25 or more. Also, what are the chances that the fakes and the real thing have the same ingredients? There's a reason the real is more costly. I'm no expert in this, but I checked, and if previous studies are anything to go by, then there's definitely a difference between the real and the fake. And this, of course, poses great risks for harm. For example, there was a time when it was found that counterfeit cosmetics can have as much as 19 times more lead what? than is legal. They can also contain chemicals like arsenic, which causes cancer, mercury, and aluminum, both of which are toxic, and even weirdly, animal feces. What? Yep, because those who make these cheap versions of products cut corners to do it. They're likely to have unsanitary conditions where animal feces ending up as an ingredient is not unheard of. And just to stretch the point here, anyone should be highly suspicious if something that usually costs $25 is $5 times less its original price at only five dollars the study i was talking about actually talks of a situation where a sting operation that included the fbi in its execution found that mac lipsticks that were being sold all over at discounted prices had as much as 300 times the amount of lead that is legally approved in the u.s the report of course ended up strongly cautioning against such products simply because these differences in chemical concentration with the real product can be at times life-threatening in short while the fake product could list what? the same ingredients as the real one there's normally a difference and in damning one for that matter. These differences could even potentially cause health complications. Now, while we're on the topic of substandard and potentially dangerous products, I might as well bundle in two things that I found alarming as well. One, there's apparently a growing concern over kids getting cosmetic products from TikTok that aren't suitable for- You're real, at least you're real. The amount of shit in beauty products? That's crazy. I'm good. I don't work till the 20 seconds, so I'm just relaxing at home. Hell yeah. Them at all. CBS reported, for instance, that impressionable kids end up buying these, quote, brightly packaged creams, lotions, oh. and serums, end quote, from their favorite influencer, but then develop side effects like rashes because the ingredients in the products are not safe for kids. Specifically, things like retinol and glycolic acid are meant for older skin and can work well on it, but are damaging to younger complexions. This is something dermatologists actually confirmed. Now, while this isn't a case of a fake or substandard product, it simply points out a problem which I mentioned earlier. Kids are being influenced on the platform, particularly because they couldn't be more loyal to their favorite influencer. And look, to my young viewers who are watching this video right now, first of all, probably shouldn't be buying stuff Brent Rivera is telling you to buy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know if he does TikTok shop stuff. He probably does. But <laughs> also don't buy stuff that you can ingest or put on your body maybe if you're buying like an iphone holder you're probably gonna get scammed but okay but seriously actually this doesn't even go to my young viewers to everyone please <laughs> don't buy cream on tiktok shop don't buy the special so i can sell you some cream my bad dude that was a weak stroke game Soda, TikTok soda. I don't know if that's a thing, but there was like that pink sauce a couple of months yeah, last year, two years ago. I don't even remember how long that was. What? But I feel like that should be a rule of thumb, but if it's not already, butt sauce. Don't buy anything you put on your body or ingest. Just it's that should be a rule of thumb. Let's keep going. A big part of this issue, according to reports, is that the Get Ready With Me videos, which apparently are sometimes done by influencers as young as 9, has what? many children viewers, and kids as young as 8 are getting sold into these multi-step skincare routines that have them buying The pink sauce, you know? Y you mean blood? quite expensive products like Sephora and Mecca, there's actually a whole thing that came out of videos like this. People began to wonder if kids should really be using skincare products from the likes of Drunk Bro. Elephant in the first place. Vice, for example, asked an actual dermatologist about it, and in general, the answer was that some bits of skincare products could lead to sensitive skin in kids that would be difficult to treat down the road. Anyway, before we get sucked into the skincare and skinfluencer rabbit hole, basically, as I said earlier, the point is that there are psychological tactics to selling to users that have no chance of winning, and kids are even even worse in that regard and oh condiment is that what is that the is that the, the 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 glizzy that's like pink is that where that came from every time i see that image i go Ugh. Ugh. this brings me to the other thing i found concerning fake reviews it's obviously one thing to see Rep UGC bro. videos recommending Felix, something what's up? disclosing it as an ad, but then it is totally a whole other level if the comments on such video but are sauce. fake. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because there's a fortune report which found that TikTok shop had vendors that had been previously kicked off of Amazon for the <laughs> shady practice of exchanging products for reviews. An example is Saka Precision manufacturing with its brands, Taotronics and Vava. Same see, and this is where Steam got it correct, bro. There's no physical whatever. You're not whatever sending them whatever. It's literally you have the game. Okay, you can make the review. Okay, oh, this person received this product for free. And they're reviewing it, you know? And unless it's like you have to mark that. But I don't think that is that how it works. Maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I'm dumb. I've just seen that a lot on Steam. And I'm like, oh, okay. They know what's up. 
Not yet, Elise. Not yet. I might try and finish it tonight, actually. Same thing with this company, which I'm gonna butcher that name if I pronounce it, and its popular brand of headphones, Empow. Now I've dwelled a bit on the cosmetic products because they're really a hot commodity on TikTok and everywhere else too, but there are other many categories of products where the same thing is happening. And I'm talking about them being substandard or just dangerous. The Sun, a popular UK publication for example, reported a case where a lady named Annie had her TikTok hair curler explode while it was quote, plugged what? in and switched on. What? That's obviously the worst case scenario, or maybe near worst case scenario. I mean, she wasn't holding it while it exploded, luckily. But the thing is, it could have. It turned out that for such products, in the UK at least, there's no legal obligation for online marketplaces to make sure that the items on their platforms are safe for people to use. They can sell almost anything and everything. That's unlike regular stores like supermarkets, which need to do thorough tests. That's probably why there have been warnings that TikTok shop could just be another way for millions of cheap products to make their way to consumers without much scrutiny. I mean, how else do you explain the mini car trash going for 37 cents, a $16 computer desk, or even three-piece sand sheets going for just $8.43. I'd also bet that's the same reason a bunch of people are buying counterfeit products and not knowing that they're counterfeit. For example, what? remember the Stanley Cup? Well, besides the love-hate relationship oh. most people have with it, it's a prime example of how cheap can go hand in hand with fake. According Somebody was saying that this was a Stanley Cup, bro. No. Do you think, literally earlier I just said, a lot of months I make what less than a minimum wage worker makes. You really think I'm gonna buy a Stanley Cup this big? You think I'm gonna be able to afford that shit? No, the hell I'm not. I got this from five below, okay? Got this for five fucking dollars. According to some, what seemed like great deals, coupons, and sales of the genuine cup turned out to be them just falling for fake stuff that looked really close to the originals. And the problem, as framed by this user, is that those who never knew what the original thing was supposed to look like went on to share and sort of become micro-influencers for the fake stuff. Right, right. This of course would get these products in front of a lot more people, and the cycle just kept repeating itself. Now I'm pretty sure I've already brought up the idea that these tactics used by TikTok and creators cut across multiple product categories. However, I'm bringing it up again because as mentioned in this Fortune article, not only does the sheer volume of products under each subcategory for instance become overwhelming in terms of choice, but it also acts as grounds for a lot of listings that are just not true or tailored for search engines and not people. I'll expand on that in a bit, but first, something I found interesting also mentioned in this article is that rather weirdly, TikTok shop doesn't list the brand name before someone clicks on the product. What they huh? show instead, and very generously, are the products in free shipping, the ones in red and green colors, then next to the product, there are numbers to show how many times the product has been sold. Also, a countdown clock for the hours it's on sale, and in general, a setup that creates a sense of urgency about buying the oh. item. And I'm not saying that's evil or illegal. A bunch of websites do that. They put a fake countdown to get you to buy. Elise, but Elise, thanks for hanging. Appreciate you leaving the stream tab. You're a fucking real one. Have an amazing rest of your night. Uh, gotta appreciate you, homie. But I figured I'd just mention that if I'm already making a whole video on TikTok shop. Anyway, when I talk of listings that aren't true, what I mean is something like this description. Women's three-piece high-waist workout shorts butt lifting tummy control. What? Rugged, rutched, I don't know how to say that word. Rugged butt smile yoga short pants. That's definitely not a real product. Just a compilation what? of phrases to trick the algorithm into praising that specific product. Now, because of the sheer volume of items on TikTok shop as a whole, it's likely that such things would go undetected, given maybe the company could be dealing with bigger fish, like influencers that fail to disclose sponsored posts and ads. Scams for everyone. What comes out of this though, and a segue to the next dangerous bit of TikTok shop, are the outright scams. Here for instance, the guy going by Colonel Dump bought a charging station, only for it to turn out to be really low quality, like too flimsy to even hold the phone. What? So a sort of misrepresenting listing, right? Well, yeah, but there's more. When he went back on TikTok to check out the seller, he found that the store had closed down, and it did so after selling about 150 pieces of that item. This actually turns out to be a weird issue because it even puts TikTok itself in a weird spot. How? Well, TikTok requires shops to issue a full refund within 30 days if the product is faulty or for whatever other valid reason the buyer wants to send it back. But then, right. what happens if the shop the user bought it from closes down? Because even though TikTok says such a shop needs to fulfill its duty to buyers up to 90 days after its last product was sold and delivered, how do the buyers contact the shop once it's closed? Right. See what I mean? Even worse, 
What happens if the shop sells 150 items of a banned item? Like I just showed you on that Colonel Dump video. And then it gets shut abruptly by TikTok themselves. My dad buys stuff on TikTok shop. Only one of his things didn't show up, so he got a refund. That's fire. I mean, to be honest with you, TikTok shop is still going to exist whether we all buy from it or not. I feel like you just got to be smart about what you're buying and where you're buying it from, you know? Because I know, like, Mike, my favorite artist, his only Steve's brand, I'm pretty sure, or at least his Mike brand, is on TikTok shop. And from what I know, they treat their workers at, re at least up to the standard of most companies. And also, like, they're, they're a legitimate brand that make high-quality shit. So there is good shops on, or, like, good companies on there. I'm sure there's small businesses on there. Like, Todd was showing the example of the couple people in the beginning of selling plants and, like, acne care and stuff like that. But you also got to be aware of the bad actors. Where is the buyer supposed to get their refund from? In an investigation, the Sun found cases that were exactly like that. Merchants simply going AWOL on buyers. And not just going AWOL, which I mean closing their shop after products have shipped, like in the case I just showed you. No, we're talking of shops that sell products, then just straight up close down without even sending the product to buyers. What? Now, whether the sellers get taken down willingly or get taken down for selling copyrighted products, it's still a dangerous and annoying thing for the buyer to experience. Also, while what I've just talked about can be a gray line between intentional scamming or just a misunderstanding between dropshippers and TikTok, this next one is outright theft. I'm talking about such incidences where the merchants issue a fake tracking number such that the item will quote get delivered but not to the actual buyer and to be fair to tiktok the fake tracking number scam isn't unique to them amazon for instance has had legitimate merchants complain that there are third-party sellers that list items similar to theirs and then pull off this scam on unsuspecting customers they don't deliver to the actual customer rather they send it to a random address within the same zip code and then when the customer complains and asks for a refund due to amazon policies the fault goes to the carrier which means both the fake merchant and the buyer get oh. to keep the money i'm not sure if that's exactly how it happens on tiktok but what's for sure is that it happens quite often the lady ordered the viral crisscross chair this one which was going for 13 dollars which is already very suspicious and she was given a fake tracking number she of course never got the chair although she did dispute the transaction with the bank it was supposedly 13 dollars, and i know if it sounds too good to be true it's probably a scam but you know me i thought that somehow maybe they messed up and they were going to go ahead and honor the pricing well i was excited when i saw that they had shipped something and i was tracking my chair and then all of a sudden it says that my item had been delivered but it really hadn't been delivered so i come to find out that they gave me a fake tracking number they gave me literally a fake tracking number so I was never, ever going to get something. And now that I remember that picture that, you know, that UPS takes, that box was way too small to even be a chair. So I Ugh. called the bank and I disputed that because if they thought they were going to get away with my $13, they're not. I'd rather lose $13. I'd rather give them away, but I wasn't going to let no one scam me. So be careful. And if you do get scammed, make sure you call your bank and dispute the charge. But I'm That's not hard. sure everyone else would be quick enough to realize it's a scam and call their bank. I mean, comments on that video show just how frequently this happens. And I'm willing to bet a lot of people, like the guy who ordered a charging station, would just let it go. It is just a few bucks, right? Now, in an even weirder twist, there are merchants that seem to try every trick in the book to get away with saying they got the item delivered. This what? case here, for instance, is pretty bizarre because after sharing how she got scammed while buying course, the cream that we talked about earlier, Earlier, this creator got sent an empty package. What? Now I could go on and on, but I'm sure you get the point I'm trying to make. There are a lot of cases where people have been scammed by either products that are nothing like the listing or that never even get shipped at all. But then it doesn't stop there. It turns out that even creators themselves somehow get scammed in the process. What? And what I'm about to explain should also answer the question as to how new TikTok shops with barely any followers can very quickly gain traction and end up scamming a lot of people. So the case involves a brand known as Sud Scrubs. According to one of their people, uh -huh. they had been wondering how fake TikTok shops were able to rip off people with fake scrubs while having no followers but using the brand's original pictures and videos. Well, their investigation found that these fake shops would send products for review to small creators and ask them to make promotional content for them. To the creator, they're just making a legitimate video for a brand they think is legitimate oh. as well. In the real sense though, the fake shop is using the creator as a way to gain legitimacy among not only the specific creator's audience, but also the audience in the wider platform. That's how they're able to get people to buy from them that quickly. And what do the creators get from it? 
Well, yes, the commissions. These fake shops use the TikTok affiliate program in order to get creators to agree to work with them. And again, most of these small creators usually have no idea that what they are promoting are fake merchants ripping off the original brands that are actually on TikTok themselves. Truly a wild west, as I said. Now, even worse, these small creators can end up getting scammed from set commissions. How? Well, this is how it goes down according to one such creator, Brittany K. Woods. A brand, one of the fake ones of course, reaches out via WhatsApp or Gmail and asks to work with the creator. WhatsApp? They are very insistent and persuasive. In her case, they wanted her to promote some bodysuits mm. in exchange for commissions and they wanted the whole thing done really fast. Excited to work with the brand and due to the pressure they had on her, she made the video, sent it in, and also posted it on her own page. To her surprise, TikTok took the video down for a copyright violation. She had unknowingly promoted a fake product. Harley, happy birthday, homie. I hope you're having the best day. I hope you have the best day, actually. And still, the guys who had contacted her, instead of just walking away, were apparently insisting they could work together on other things. Another creator, Manny Gillespie, I really hope I pronounced that right, brought up a very similar issue while also adding that part of her skepticism in working with these shops was clicking on the links they send. Apparently, there are cases huh? of some people losing control of their social oh. media accounts by clicking oh, random links. Oh, yeah. Few Yo, watch out. Unigis got got by one of them. A download link and then they got your shit. They hack your channel. Yeah, you're cooked. Some have even had to pay the scammers to get their TikTok accounts back. Now, this creator also gives tips for other creators to not get scammed. And the gist of it is that dealing with brands might need to happen via direct interaction with their official TikTok accounts, not the Gmail or WhatsApp accounts. However, it seems that it could be hard to distinguish between fake brand accounts and real ones for some items. There are also situations where even if the deal goes through and TikTok does not take down videos made in collaboration, some brands just rip off the creators of their commissions. Rachel Carlisle is one such case. Apparently, she had worked with a certain brand, Sinkbody, to promote one of their products, which she did, and then posted a video with an affiliate link. She got about 14 million views, clearly an insanely good number. But then from it, she was paid zero commission. She then made a video exposing what? the company for what they zero? did, and they apologized and tried to get her to take down the video because they were, quote, going to make it right, end quote. Well... They didn't, and instead tried suing her. Now, I'm not sure what, what became of that legal battle, but it seems the brand is still up and running because they have videos on their page from as recently as last week. Unethical sourcing. Overall, what we've already been talking about is telling enough. TikTok shop can be a dangerous place. However, what adds to that pile with even sadder undertones is the ethics of the kinds of products found in these shops. I'm specifically talking about merchants that stock counterfeit goods. As one student in an interview with CNBC said, if a purse, for example, is going for $4, quote, what are the ethics behind that? Is it sustainably made? What kind of labor was used to make this product? I mean, I feel this is a valid question, given it's the same concern of fast fashion. Harley, hell yeah, you just as old as me, bro. We old as hell and the kind of damage it leaves behind. I'm sure we all remember the Sheen influencer debacle from 2023, where they flew influencers to China to try to showcase some of the production work, only for the thing to backfire on them. Huh. Is it Sheen? Is it Shane? It's 2024, and I you still threw don't up? care. What? <laughs> that move had come from the reports alleging that Sheen was making their very cheap prices possible by using forced labor, human rights violations, I'm in charge. stealing work what? from other designers, and clothing made from potentially hazardous materials. Amazon did also get accused of having suppliers linked to forced labor in China in a similar manner as Sheen. And, just a little context here, these accusations, both for Sheen and Amazon, seem to stem from the widespread concern and honestly shocking evidence about forced labor in, I'm not gonna pronounce that right so it's on the screen, a large region of Western China. Without going too much into it, what official government sources stated was that China's government, at the time, and maybe still now, was trying to erase ethnic and religious identities in ways cleverly disguised as, quote, vocational training, end quote. They basically had about 1,200 state-run detention camps holding different what? ethnic groups and used forced labor to suppress them. In these camps, violence, forceful what? drug intake, SA, and even torture were not uncommon tactics of making the detainees work. And they did produce quite a wide variety of goods that ended up in U.S. markets. In response, the U.S. government made the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which banned imported goods sourced from suppliers in that western region of China. Now, I'm not at all saying that TikTok shop is complicit of forced labor, but I'm just saying they are selling really cheap goods, like really extremely cheap, so it makes you question it a little bit. I also did go ahead and try to dig a bit more into these factories, and what I found on TikTok is a little hard to judge. There are these videos and lives that have been floating around and alleging to be factory workers in China stuck in low-paying, dead-end jobs that have them working almost around the clock all week. However, some are obviously fake and look 
like content farms trying to fish for sympathy and clicks, but then others look like legit factories where people work. They also don't show necessarily poor conditions, but also, it's impossible to rule out that's not happening. Either way, coming back to the point I made earlier, what are the labor ethics of something like a purse that goes as cheap as $4? And rounding up this video as a whole, what are the chances that the dangerous side of TikTok shop grows as TikTok continues to grow itself? TikTok expects to grow its shop business three times to $17.5 billion in the US in 2024. With that being said, let's head on to the outro. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed tough. the video, make sure to leave a like. Yes, actually click the like button. It makes me feel all nice and warm inside. If you're new to the channel, I have to look and see if the TikTok shop has something I'm looking for while Tov does his outro. Oh, there's only seven seconds left. I better make this quick. Make sure to subscribe. That would be pretty awesome. That is if I earn your subscription. I'll see you guys next time I upload. All right, I'm looking. Did I misspell something? Oh my god, they do have it. Oh, it's like the same as Amazon, but it's free shipping. Oh, I can get it cheaper. Th Yo, there's no way. Oh no, I can't get it cheaper. I'm trying to get me a Childers Brian 2024 rip, dude. <laughs> but you can get it for 14 bucks. Extra 25% off, free shipping. Yeah, this is the great... Yo, this is the greatest... Uh, this is the greatest... Fucking, oh, between 13 and 4, what? Okay, I want white. I want it to be, um, XL. 20 bucks? Um, what the flip? T-shirt, yeah, okay, cool. Oh, you can get it in hoodie? That's kind of fire, though. Wait. Capitalism is so great. Oh, Josh. I don't mean to speak for Josh, but I think he I He going to be aight. Josh sometimes just be like, hey, bro, sorry I was gone. I threw up. I'm good, though. What's up? If you're looking for a shop that won't scam you, check out my clothing brand's newest drop. Almost sold out. Oh, yeah. Is this... Is this is is there still available stuff? I got I to gotta tap in at some point. We'll check it out that in a second. Um, TikTok shop is like a dollar store on steroids with the added bonus of not being able to know if it has passed all the required safety requirements. The people who scare me are those who willingly buy food, medicine, or body care products. The amount of sellers on Amazon who have had arsenic and lead in their products, why would you trust unverified products? That is true. Yeah, I would never buy anything like that off of TikTok. You got more good content? What do you have? I feel like if I buy something from TikTok shop, I just might get a bomb on my doorstep instead of the product. It's basically Timu, but just reban- Yes, that's literally what it is. I'll never understand the little kids and preteens having multi-step skincare routines. There are so many layers to that, and none of that is good, but just what kid wants to do that? Not all kids are messy, but it's typical to not even want to take baths every day at that age. Forget full-on face- Pull on skincare routines. When I first started getting acne around 11 or 12, I hated the idea of having any kind of routine for my skin. I thought it was unfair that I had to do it and other kids didn't. IDK, maybe I was just lazy, but it felt like way too much work. I finally came around, but a couple of years later, I feel the way, I feel that way. As a child, your skin is the last thing you should be worrying about in my LMAO. Your hormones are fine, and you can literally rub dirt and baking grease all over your face for five hours a day. It's still have perfect complexion. It's sad this whole Sephora drunk elephant skincare craze is making them worry about their appearance, appearances plus conform, conformity already, not to mention the inexperience. Over exfoliating, not knowing how to layer properly, and just having a little baby skin can give them... Chemical burns, skin peeling, rashes, and the acne they were trying to chase away in the first place. That is kind of wild. No, what? Okay, chat and chat adjacent. I must retire to the land of sleepy... Eponymous world. So good night and good luck. 
Good fucking yo. Thank you, Greenish. You're real as fuck for that. I've noticed that after looking at a TikTok product and adding it to my cart, they really pressure you into buying it. I get many videos over that same product for the next couple of days. They really put the product into your head to make you buy it. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. I'm going to have to try that with the Children's Brian thing. See what happens. Let's take a look at this Earl shop. Okay. Slay. Oh, yo. It's what's her name? I'm blanking on her name. I'm sorry. Beanie 25. Okay. T okay. Yeah, okay. These are these are pretty fair prices. I mean, especially comparing them to Mike's prices. They're ch pretty cheap.